Yo what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on core java programming for beginners so in this tutorial we are going to be looking into the variables in java programming so if you are coming from a c++ programming background and you already know the variables in c++ things are going to be pretty much similar to that and it's very easy for you however if java programming is the programming language that you are starting off with then there is a little bit of learning curve but it is very easy and i'll be teaching you from the very basics so with that being said let's get started so we'll start off with a little bit of theory on variables and data types and later on we'll also jump into the programming aspect so starting off with the theory let's talk about variables so basically a variable is a name of reserved area location in memory so obviously when you run and execute your program that is your java program it runs and resides in the memory that is the ram right so when you create a variable some area in the memory is reserved with that particular name so as you can see in other words it is a name of a memory location so it is a combination of vari variable so vary plus able that means it can be changed during the execution of the program and basically variable is the basic unit of storage in a program so at any time you want to store certain value in a program you need to create a variable the value is stored in variable can be changed during the execution of the program that is why it is named as variable it's pretty similar to the variables in algebra that you've studied so a variable is only a name given to a memory location and all the operations that are done on the variable take effect at that memory location so this this name is just for our reference because in a computer memory the memory locations have weird addresses right say they have binary and hexadecimal addresses which you cannot remember so that's why you give an alias name to that memory location so let's see how that works behind the scenes so let me just switch to the digital blackboard so let's see what happens when you create a variable in a java program so consider this as your pc and you are writing a program so you've written some program and you are executing it and you've created a variable let's say you create a variable x and let's say the data type is integer now we have yet to see the data types and we'll see them in a minute but right now just assume that this x variable that you've created so this is the name of the variable okay so this is the name and this is the data type and you're saying x equals to 5 okay which means that your variable has a name of x it is a integer data type so it is going to hold a integer value so this is a numeric value 5 so what happens behind the scenes so in your computer in your ram when your program is executing the program stores some value or stores some memory block so let's say this is that memory block let me use another color so these four blocks are reserved so let's consider this as one byte okay so one block is one byte so it means that four blocks are reserved so four bytes are reserved for this integer variable that you have created so now this entire block is now called as x and the value stored inside the these four blocks is 5 okay usually these blocks have some weird values like hexadecimal values f0 10x and something like that some binary values and of course you cannot remember these values right so that's why we give we give our alias names which are easily readable for us and these are temporary names given to this memory location and they exist only while the program is running and residing in the ram so this is what exactly happens behind the scenes so suppose if i create one more variable let's say int y is equal to 2 inside the ram again the program will store four more bytes so let's say these three and this one okay and this new four byte of memory location will be now addressed by y so we've given this a name and the value inside it would be 2 so memory usually is continuous in nature so we have memory locations which are contiguous or continuous in nature so one by one they reside besides each other and that's how memory allocation also happens and this is what exactly happens behind the scenes when variables are created in a program which is executing and which is residing in your ram so this was little bit theoretical aspect of what variables are and basically why we create variables is to hold values so say for example you want to create a calculator program and you want to take two input values from users so you need you need to store those two values that you take from user right so that time you need to create those two variables to hold those values now moving on depending upon where the variable is created in a program we can categorize these types of variables into three types so the first one is local variable which is over here the second one is instance variable and third one is static variable so let me just read out the first type so a variable which is declared inside the method is called a local variable so this method means function 
and don't confuse between methods and functions. They are pretty much one and the same. However, in Java programming, we call them as methods because they are associated with object oriented programming. And when we are into procedural oriented programming, we call them as functions. So we have this example over here. Let's take an example of a local variable. So you can see inside the public static void main. So this is the starting point of the program execution, right? So we've already seen a hello world program before and the starting point for any Java program execution is the main function. So this is that main function public static void main string args and inside the curly brackets, we have this variable int n is equal to 90. So this is an example of local variable because it is inside a method. So let's see what an instance variable is. So a variable which is declared inside the class, but outside any method is called instance variable. And also it is not declared as static. Okay. So let's see where exactly this kind of variable would exist. So in this entire program, again, have a look at the first line itself. We have a class a and right at the start, we have int data is equal to 50. So this is an example of an instance variable. Why so? Because it is not inside any function or method, but it is inside a class. So it is a class level instance variable. And lastly, we have static variables. So a variable that is declared as static explicitly is called a static variable and it cannot be local. So the next line over here in the example that is static int m. So if we did not write static, it would have been an instance variable. However, since we have explicitly stated that it is a static variable, it becomes a static variable. And basically there are differences between a normal variable and static variable which we will see in detail in further video tutorials. Right now you just need to understand that the, these two are not the same. Essentially static variable is at a class level and the normal variables that is the instance variables are at object level. So in order to access the instance variable, you need to create an object and to access a static variable, you can directly use the class. And yes, we also have to discuss classes and objects, but let's cover little basics initially and then we'll move on to classes and objects and those concepts that of object oriented programming. Anyways, these are the three different types of variables depending upon where they are created. So now let's move on to the data type of these variables. So in Java programming, we have different data types. Let's take a look at them. So just like C++ in Java programming, also we have different data types of variables. So since Java is a strongly typed programming language, which means that we have to specify the type of data and the type of variables and entities that we create. It's compulsory. So in if you know PHP programming language, we never specify the data type of any variable. Whatever the variable takes in as an input is assigned as its data type. But in Java programming, we have to explicitly tell the type of variable or tell the type of any entity that we create beforehand. So yeah, Java is a strongly typed programming language wherein we have to specify every type of whatever entity that we create in the program. So now there are two basic categories. One is primitive data type and one is non-primitive data type. So primitive data type as the name suggests are the inbuilt data types, the basic data types which are already existing in Java and the non-primitive data types are the ones that we create or our complex data types like strings, arrays, the objects that we create, the classes and objects that we define and etc. So now primitive data types are again further categorized as Boolean and numeric. So Boolean is only one, there is only one data type in Boolean that is Boolean itself. So you say Boolean flag. So flag is my variable name and the data type is going to be Boolean and it stores true or false. We'll see what default values they store. Then in the numeric part, we have character and integral part. So character we have char. So we have char x is equal to a, which will store a one character. Then we have integral and as the name suggests, these are dealing with numbers. And again, these numbers can be divided into two types that is integers and floating points. So floating points will be the fractional numbers wherein the decimal point is involved and these are whole numbers. So integer, we have byte, short, int and long. Now these are pretty much same just that the size is different. So long would store a long or larger number compared to int. Short would store a shorter number or a smaller number than int and byte would store again a smaller number than short and that that's how it goes. And then we have floating point numbers. So we have float and double. So again, floating point would be something like 0 0.1 or 1.56. And then the only difference between float and double is float will store a smaller number and double will store a larger number, which would be again fractional. So let's see the sizes involved of these primitive data types. So as you can see, I have all the primitive data types. 
so boolean as i mentioned will have a default value of false and it will store one bit value then we have char the default value if you don't specify anything this is the default value and it will store two byte value for reference i have a small table which gives the conversion between bits and the bytes so so if number of bits is 1 it is called as a bit if number of bits is 4 it is called as nibble if number of bits is 8 it is called a byte so two bytes would be 2 into 8 which is equal to 16 bits so this is just the conversion reference then 16 bits would be a word or two bytes anyways then we have byte whose default size is 1 byte and default value is 0 then we have short int and long so short and int default value is 0 and 0 short will store two byte value which means a little bit of a larger number compared to byte int will have four bytes so again larger number than short and long has eight bytes the default value is 0 l and it will store much larger number compared to int basically twice of its size then the floating point numbers are float and double float can store a four byte value and double can store an eight byte value which means double can store twice the value of float that is twice the larger number as float and both of them are floating points so 0.0 f for float and 0.0 d for double is the default value so these are the sizes of data types and you don't really have to buy at them this is just for reference purpose so moving on to the last part is the rules for naming identifiers so these identifiers are the names of the variables methods classes packages and interfaces that we assign okay so that's what these identifiers are and there are certain rules for naming and creating these identifiers so following rules while creating these identifiers as are as follows so identifiers must be composed of letters numbers underscore and dollar sign now these identifiers are essentially the names that we give to these variables so when we create a name for a variable it has to follow certain rules so identifiers may only begin with a letter the underscore or a dollar sign the main restriction on the name is you can't have white spaces between the name you cannot begin a variable with a number all variables are case sensitive and there is no limit to the length of a java variable name so let's see certain examples which are valid and invalid so these are valid variable names you can see my variable it is joined there is no space in between then we can have small caps and these two are different okay it's java is a case sensitive language so capital my my variable would be different from small my variable again it would be different from this it can have a single alphabet variable name can be a single alphabet you can start off with underscore or dollar you can start off with underscore and then a number and then a plain name these are the invalid names you cannot have space in between you can see there is a space in between contains a space then you cannot start off with a number you cannot have plus sign which is an alpha alpha numeric character you cannot have hyphens you cannot have apostrophe you cannot have ampersand that is and sign so these are certain invalid names so i hope now you have a good idea about variables and data types and the theoretical aspect and what happens in the ram as well So let's actually go ahead and see one program and let's try to create a couple of variables so that we also take a look at the practical aspect of variables. So quickly open up your NetBeans IDE and you can create a project. Go to File, New Project, select Java, Java Application. Just hit Next. Give any name. Right now I'm just keeping the default name. Hit Finish, and everything will be created for you in the NetBeans IDE. So that's one advantage of NetBeans IDE. Everything is prepared for you. you can see this is a java application 4. java tab i'll say close others just erasing all the comments and in the public static void main what we'll do is we'll create some integer variable so i'll say int x so this statement is known as variable declaration let's create a double variable i'll say double y and i'll say is equal to 5.5 I'll say semicolon. So every statement has to end with a semicolon in Java programming that that denotes the end of that statement. Now here you can see I created double y and I also assigned a value. So this is variable declaration and initialization because I initialize the variable with an initial value of five point five. So I did both the two things in one statement. I could have said y is equal to or i could have just created the variable first and then i would have said x is equal to 3 right even this is possible so this is variable initialization as a st separate step and you can do both the steps in a single step as well 
Now let's try to print these values. So to print these values, we have system control space. If you hit control space in NetBeans ID, you get the different methods or different options that you can use. And the one that I'm interested in is this system dot out dot print ln. So double click on it. Inside that I'll say value of variable x is colon and this is the exact string that is going to be printed. So anything that you want to be printed exactly on the console, you have to type in the print ln method in the double quotes. And then I can also attach or append the variable, the actual variable that is this x which has a new value of three. So in order to do that, I just have to use plus and I have to say X. So what will happen is the thing that is inside these double quotes will be printed as it is. And then I say plus. So this plus is concatenation of the variable X and here X is holding three. So this three will be printed. So let's just save this and let's try to run this. You can see this run or play button, green play button, just click on it. It will run the entire project. And you can see Java 4 is running and you'll probably see an output over here. And there you go. You can see the output value of variable X is three. Similarly, if I just copy this entire line and paste it once. And if I say value of variable Y is and if I append Y over here, save this again, hit run. You can see value of variable Y is 5.5 is printed. So this was basic variable declaration, variable initialization. We also did variable declaration and initialization in one step and then we printed those values. So for now, let's keep this simple and let's stop over here. You can go ahead and create different variables and different data types and try to print them out just for practice. If you are very new to this, otherwise you're good to go. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of variables and data types in Java programming. We saw both theoretical as well as a practical example on this topic. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Peace.